Now it came to pass after the death of Saul, when David had returned from the slaughter of the Amalekites, and David had stayed two days in Ziklag. It came even to pass on the third day that, behold, a man came out of the camp from Saul with his clothes rent and earth upon his head, and so it was, when he came to David, that he fell to the earth and did obeisance. And David said unto him, From whence comest thou? And he said unto him, Out of the camp of Israel am I escaped. And David said unto him, How went the matter? I pray thee, tell me. And he answered, The people have fled from the battle, and many of the people also are fallen and dead, and Saul and Jonathan his son are dead also. And David said unto the young man who told him, How knowest thou that Saul and Jonathan his son are dead? And the young man who told him said, As I happened by chance upon Mount Gilboa, behold, Saul leaned upon his spear, and lo, the chariots and horsemen followed hard after him. And when he looked behind him, he saw me and called unto me. And I answered, Here am I. And he said unto me, Who art thou? And I answered him, I am an Amalekite. And he said unto me again, Stand, I pray thee, upon me, and slay me, for anguish is come upon me, because my life is yet whole in me. So I stood upon him and slew him, because I was sure that he could not live after he was fallen. And I took the crown that was upon his head and the bracelet that was on his arm, and have brought them hither unto my lord. Then David took hold on his clothes and rent them, and likewise all the men who were with him. And they mourned and wept and fasted until evening for Saul and for Jonathan his son, and for the people of the Lord and for the house of Israel, because they had fallen by the sword. And David said unto the young man who told him, From whence art thou? And he answered, I am the son of a stranger, an Amalekite. And David said unto him, How wast thou not afraid to stretch forth thine hand to destroy the Lord's anointed? And David called one of the young men and said, Go near, and fall upon him. And he smote him so that he died. And David said unto him, Thy blood be upon thy head, for thy mouth hath testified against thee, saying, I have slain the Lord's anointed. And David lamented with this lamentation over Saul and over Jonathan his son. Also he bade them teach the children of Judah the use of the bow, behold, it is written in the book of Jasher. The beauty of Israel is slain upon thy high places. How are the mighty fallen? Tell it not in Gath, publish it not in the streets of Ashkelon, lest the daughters of the Philistines rejoice, lest the daughters of the uncircumcised triumph. Ye mountains of Gilboa, let there be no dew, neither let there be rain upon you, nor fields of offerings. For there the shield of the mighty is vilely cast away, the shield of Saul, as though he had not been anointed with oil. From the blood of the slain, from the fat of the mighty, the bow of Jonathan turned not back, and the sword of Saul returned not empty. Saul and Jonathan were lovely and pleasant in their lives, and in their death they were not divided, they were swifter than eagles, they were stronger than lions. Ye daughters of Israel, weep over Saul, who clothed you in scarlet, with other delights, who put on ornaments of gold upon your apparel. How are the mighty fallen in the midst of the battle? O Jonathan, thou was slain in thine high places. I am distressed for thee, my brother Jonathan, very pleasant hast thou been unto me. Thy love to me was wonderful, passing the love of women. How are the mighty fallen, and the weapons of war perished? And it came to pass after this that David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go up into any of the cities of Judah? And the Lord said unto him, Go up. And David said, Whither shall I go up? And he said, Unto Hebron. So David went up thither, and his two wives also, Ahinoam the Jezreelites, and Abigail, Nabal's wife the Carmelite. And his men who were with him did David bring up, every man with his household, and they dwelt in the cities of Hebron. And the men of Judah came, and there they anointed David king over the house of Judah. And they told David, saying, The men of jabesh were those who buried Saul. And David sent messengers unto the men of jabesh and said unto them, Blessed be ye of the Lord, that ye have shown this kindness unto your Lord, even unto Saul, and have buried him. And now the Lord show kindness and truth unto you, and I also will requite you this kindness, because ye have done this thing. Therefore now, let your hands be strengthened and be ye valiant, for your master Saul is dead, and also the house of Judah has anointed me king over them. But Abner the son of Nah, captain of Saul's host, took Ishbosheth the son of Saul and brought him over to Mahanaim. And made him king over Gilead, and over the Ashurites, and over Jezreel, and over Ephraim, and over Benjamin, and over all Israel. Ishbosheth, Saul's son, 
was forty years old when he began to reign over Israel, and reigned two years. But the house of Judah followed David. And the time that David was king in Hebron over the house of Judah was seven years and six months. And Abner the son of Nah, and the servants of Ishbosheth the son of Saul, went out from Mahanaim to Gibeon. And Job the son of Zeruiah and the servants of David went out and met together by the pool of Gibeon, and they sat down, the one on one side of the pool and the other on the other side of the pool. And Abner said to Job, Let the young men now arise and play before us. And Job said, Let them arise. Then there arose and went over by number, twelve of Benjamin, who pertained to Ishbosheth the son of Saul, and twelve of the servants of David. And they caught every one his fellow by the head and thrust his sword in his fellow's side, so they fell down together, therefore that place was called Helkoth Hazarim that is, the field of strong men, which is in Gibeon. And there was a very sore battle that day, and Abner was beaten, and the men of Israel, before the servants of David. And there were three sons of Zeruiah there, Job and Abishai and Asahel. And Asahel was as light of foot as a wild row. And Asahel pursued after Abner, and in going he turned not to the right hand nor to the left from following Abner. Then Abner looked behind him and said, Art thou Asahel? And he answered, I am. And Abner said to him, Turn thee aside to thy right hand or to thy left, and lay thee hold on one of the young men and take thee his armor. But Asahel would not turn aside from following him. And Abner said again to Asahel, Turn thee aside from following me. Why should I smite thee to the ground? How then should I hold up my face to Job thy brother? However, he refused to turn aside. Therefore Abner with the rear end of the spear smote him under the fifth rib, so that the spear came out behind him, and he fell down there and died in the same place. And it came to pass that as many as came to the place where Asahel fell down and died, stood still. Job also and Abishai pursued after Abner. And the sun went down when they had come to the hill of Amma, that lieth before Jah by the way of the wilderness of Gibeon. And the children of Benjamin gathered themselves together behind Abner and became one troop, and stood on the top of a hill. Then Abner called to Job and said, Shall the sword devour forever? Knowest thou not that it will be bitterness in the latter end? How long shall it be then, ere thou bid the people to return from following their brethren? And Job said, As God liveth, unless thou had spoken, surely then in the morning the people would have gone up every one from following his brother. So Job blew a trumpet, and all the people stood still and pursued after Israel no more, neither fought they any more. And Abner and his men walked all that night through the plain, and passed over the Jordan and went through all Bithran, and they came to Mahanaim. And Job returned from following Abner, and when he had gathered all the people together, there lacked of David's servants nineteen men and Asahel. And they took up Asahel and buried him in the sepulchre of his father, which was in Bethlehem. And Job and his men went all night, and they came to Hebron at break of day. Now there was long war between the house of Saul and the house of David, but David waxed stronger and stronger, and the house of Saul waxed weaker and weaker. And unto David were sons born in Hebron, and his firstborn was Amnon, of Ahinoam the Jezreelites. And his second, Chilab, of Abigail the wife of Nabal the Carmelite, and the third, Absalom the son of Makkah, the daughter of Talma king of Geshur. And the fourth, Adonijah the son of Hajith, and the fifth, Shephisha the son of Abidal. And the sixth, Ithrim, by Egla David's wife. These were born to David in Hebron. And it came to pass, while there was war between the house of Saul and the house of David, that Abner made himself strong for the house of Saul. And Saul had a concubine, whose name was Rispah, the daughter of Aah. And Ishbosheth said to Abner, Why hast thou gone in unto my father's concubine? Then was Abner very wroth for the words of Ishbosheth, and said, Am I a dog's head, who against Judah do show kindness this day unto the house of Saul thy father, to his brethren and to his friends, and have not delivered thee into the hand of David? That thou chargest me today with a fault concerning this woman? God so do to Abner, and more also, unless, as the Lord hath sworn to David, even so I do to him. To translate the kingdom from the house of Saul and to set up the throne of David over Israel and over Judah, from Dan even to Beersheba. And he could not answer Abner a word again, because he feared him. And Abner sent messengers to David on his behalf, saying, Whose land is it? Saying also, Make thy league with me, and behold, my hand shall be with thee to bring about all Israel unto thee. And he said, Well, I will make a league with thee, but one thing I require of thee, that is, thou shalt not see my face, unless thou first bring Michael, Saul's daughter, 
when thou comest to see my face. And David sent messengers to Ishbosheth, Saul's son, saying, Deliver me my wife Michael, whom I espoused to me for a hundred foreskins of the Philistines. And Ishbosheth sent and took her from her husband, even from Paltiel the son of Laish. And her husband went along with her, weeping behind her, to Bahurim. Then said Abner unto him, Go, return. And he returned. And Abner had communication with the elders of Israel, saying, Yes sought for David in times past to be king over you. Now then do it, for the Lord hath spoken of David, saying, By the hand of my servant David, I will save my people Israel out of the hand of the Philistines and out of the hand of all their enemies. And Abner also spoke in the ears of Benjamin, and Abner went also to speak in the ears of David in Hebron all that seemed good to Israel and that seemed good to the whole house of Benjamin. So Abner came to David at Hebron, and twenty men with him. And David made Abner and the men who were with him a feast. And Abner said unto David, I will arise and go, and will gather all Israel unto my lord the king, that they may make a league with thee, and that thou mayest reign over all that thine heart desireth. And David sent Abner away, and he went in peace. And behold, the servants of David and Job came from pursuing a troop and brought in a great spoil with them, but Abner was not with David in Hebron, for he had sent him away, and he had gone in peace. When Job and all the host that was with him had come, they told Job, saying, Abner the son of Ne came to the king, and he hath sent him away, and he has gone in peace. Then Job came to the king and said, What hast thou done? Behold, Abner came unto thee, why is it that thou hast sent him away, and he is quite gone? Thou knowest Abner the son of Ne, that he came to deceive thee, and to know thy going out and thy coming in, and to know all that thou doest. And when Job had come out from David, he sent messengers after Abner, who brought him back from the well of Sirah, but David knew it not. And when Abner had returned to Hebron, Job took him aside in the gate to speak with him quietly, and smote him there under the fifth rib, so that he died for the blood of Asahel his brother. And afterward when David heard it, he said, I and my kingdom are guiltless before the Lord forever from the blood of Abner the son of Nah. Let it rest on the head of Job and on all his father's house, and let there never fail from the house of Job one who hath an issue, or who is a leper, or who leaneth on a staff, or who falleth on the sword, or who lacketh bread. So Job and Abishai his brother slew Abner, because he had slain their brother Asahel at Gibeon in the battle. And David said to Job and to all the people who were with him, Rend your clothes and gird yourselves with sackcloth, and mourn before Abner. And King David himself followed the bier. And they buried Abner in Hebron. And the king lifted up his voice and wept at the grave of Abner, and all the people wept. And the king lamented over Abner and said, Died Abner as a fool dieth? Thy hands were not bound nor thy feet put into fetters. As a man falleth before wicked men, so fellest thou. And all the people wept again over him. And when all the people came to cause David to eat meat while it was yet day, David swore, saying, So do God to me, and more also, if I taste bread or aught else till the sun be down. And all the people took notice of it, and it pleased them, as whatsoever the king did pleased all the people. For all the people and all Israel understood that day that it was not because of the king that Abner the son of Noah was slain. And the king said unto his servants, Know ye not that there is a prince and a great man fallen this day in Israel? And I am this day weak, though anointed king, and these men, the sons of Zeruiah, are too hard for me. The Lord shall reward the doer of evil according to his wickedness. And when Saul's son heard that Abner was dead in Hebron, his hands were feeble, and all the Israelites were troubled. And Saul's son had two men who were captains of companies, the name of the one was Bana and the name of the other Rechab, the sons of Rimen Abirathite, of the children of Benjamin. For Biroth also was reckoned to Benjamin. And the Berathites fled to Gittame and were sojourners there until this day. And Jonathan, Saul's son, had a son who was lame in his feet. He was five years old when the tidings came of Saul and Jonathan out of Jezreel, and his nurse took him up and fled. And it came to pass, as she made haste to flee, that he fell and became Lameh. And his name was Mephibosheth. And the sons of Rimen the Berathite, Rechab, and Bana, went and came about the heat of the day to the house of Ishbosheth, who lay on a bed at noon. And they came thither into the midst of the house as though they would have fetched wheat, and they smote him under the fifth rib, and Rechab and Bana his brother escaped. For when they came into the house, he lay on his bed in his bedchamber, and they smote him, and slew him, and beheaded him, and took his head, and got themselves away through the plain all night. 
and they brought the head of Ishbosheth unto David at Hebron, and said to the king, Behold the head of Ishbosheth the son of Saul thine enemy, who sought thy life, and the Lord hath avenged my lord the king this day of Saul and of his seed. And David answered Rechab and Bana his brother, the sons of Rimen the Berethite, and said unto them, As the Lord liveth, who hath redeemed my soul out of all adversity. When one told me, saying, Behold, Saul is dead, thinking to have brought good tidings, I took hold of him and slew him in Ziklag, he thought that I would have given him a reward for his tidings. How much more, when wicked men have slain a righteous person in his own house upon his bed? Shall I not therefore now require his blood at your hand and take you away from the earth? And David commanded his young men, and they slew them and cut off their hands and their feet, and hanged them up over the pool in Hebron. But they took the head of Ishbosheth and buried it in the sepulchre of Abner in Hebron. Then came all the tribes of Israel to David unto Hebron and spoke, saying, Behold, we are thy bone and thy flesh. Also in time past, when Saul was king over us, thou wast he that leddest out and broughtest in Israel, and the Lord said to thee, Thou shalt feed my people Israel, and thou shalt be a captain over Israel. So all the elders of Israel came to the king at Hebron, and King David made a league with them in Hebron before the Lord, and they anointed David king over Israel. David was thirty years old when he began to reign, and he reigned forty years. In Hebron he reigned over Judah seven years and six months, and in Jerusalem he reigned thirty and three years over all Israel and Judah. And the king and his men went to Jerusalem against the Jebusites, the inhabitants of the land, who spoke unto David, saying, Unless thou take away the blind and the lame, thou shalt not come in hither, thinking, David cannot come in hither. Nevertheless David took the stronghold of Zion the same is the city of David. And David said on that day, Whosoever getteth up through the gutter and smite the Jebusites, and the lame and the blind, who are hated in David's soul, he shall be chief and captain. Therefore they said, The blind and the lame shall not come into the house. So David dwelt in the fortress, and called it the city of David. And David built round about from the millow and inward. And David went on and grew great, and the Lord God of hosts was with him. And Hiram king of Tyre sent messengers to David, and cedar trees and carpenters and masons, and they built David a house. And David perceived that the Lord had established him king over Israel, and that he had exalted his kingdom for his people Israel's sake. And David took more concubines and wives out of Jerusalem after he had come from Hebron, and there were yet sons and daughters born to David. And these are the names of those who were born unto him in Jerusalem, Shammua, and Shobab, and Nathan, and Solomon. Ibhar also, and Elishua, and Nepheg, and Japhiah, but when the Philistines heard that they had anointed David king over Israel, all the Philistines came up to seek David, and David heard of it and went down to the stronghold. The Philistines also came and spread themselves in the valley of Rephaim. And David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go up to the Philistines? Wilt thou deliver them into mine hand? And the Lord said unto David, Go up, for I will surely deliver the Philistines into thine hand. And David came to baal Perazim, and David smote them there and said, The Lord hath broken forth upon mine enemies before me, as the breach of waters. Therefore he called the name of that place baal Perazim, that is, the plain of breaches. And there they left their images, and David and his men burned them. And the Philistines came up yet again and spread themselves in the valley of Rephaim. And when David inquired of the Lord, he said, Thou shalt not go up, but pass around behind them, and come upon them over against the mulberry trees. And let it be, when thou hearest the sound of moving in the tops of the mulberry trees, that then thou shalt bestir thyself, for then shall the Lord go out before thee to smite the host of the Philistines. And David did so, as the Lord had commanded him, and smote the Philistines from Geba as far as Gezer. Again, David gathered together all the chosen men of Israel, thirty thousand. And David arose, and went with all the people who were with him from Baal of Judah to bring up from thence the ark of God, whose name is called by the name of the Lord of hosts who dwelleth between the cherubims. And they set the ark of God upon a new cart, and brought it out of the house of Abinadab, that was at Jibiah, and Ua and Ahio, the sons of Abinadab, drove the new cart. And they brought it out of the house of Abinadab, which weighs at Jibiah, accompanying the ark of God, and Ahio went before the ark. And David and all the house of Israel played before the Lord on all manner of instruments made of fir wood, even on harps and on psalteries, and on timbrels and on cornets, and on cymbals. And when they came to Nachon's threshing floor, Ua put forth his hand to the ark of God and took hold of it, for the oxen shook it. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Ua, 
and God smote him there for his error, and there he died by the ark of God. And David was displeased because the Lord had broken out upon Ua, and he called the name of the place Perizaza that is, the breach of Ua to this day. And David was afraid of the Lord that day and said, How shall the ark of the Lord come to me? So David would not remove the ark of the Lord unto him into the city of David, but David carried it aside into the house of Obed-Edom the Gittite. And the ark of the Lord continued in the house of Obed-Edom the Gittite three months, and the Lord blessed Obed-Edom and all his household. And it was told King David, saying, The Lord hath blessed the house of Obed-Edom and all that pertaineth unto him, because of the ark of God. So David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obed-Edom into the city of David with gladness. And it was so that, when those who bore the ark of the Lord had gone six paces, he sacrificed oxen and fatlings. And David danced before the Lord with all his might, and David was girded with a linen ephod. So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with the sound of the trumpet. And as the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Michael, Saul's daughter, looked through a window and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, and she despised him in her heart. And they brought in the ark of the Lord, and set it in his place in the midst of the tabernacle that David had pitched for it, and David offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. And as soon as David had made an end of offering burnt offerings and peace offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord of hosts. And he dealt among all the people, even among the whole multitude of Israel, as well to the women as men, to every one a cake of bread and a good piece of flesh and a flagon of wine. So all the people departed every one to his house. Then David returned to bless his household. And Michael the daughter of Saul came out to meet David and said, How glorious was the king of Israel today, who uncovered himself today in the eyes of the handmaids of his servants, as one of the vain fellows shamelessly uncovereth himself. And David said unto Michael, It was before the Lord, who chose me before thy father and before all his house, to appoint me ruler over the people of the Lord, over Israel, therefore will I play before the Lord. And I will yet be more vile than thus, and will be base in mine own sight, and of the maidservants whom thou hast spoken of, of them shall I be held in honor. Therefore Michael the daughter of Saul had no child unto the day of her death. And it came to pass, when the king sat in his house and the Lord had given him rest round about from all his enemies, that the king said unto Nathan the prophet, See now, I dwell in a house of cedar, but the ark of God dwelleth within curtains. And Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that is in thine heart, for the Lord is with thee. And it came to pass that night that the word of the Lord came unto Nathan, saying, Go and tell my servant David, Thus saith the Lord, Shalt thou build me a house for me to dwell in? For I have not dwelt in any house since the time that I brought up the children of Israel out of Egypt even to this day, but have walked in a tent and in a tabernacle. In all the places wherein I have walked with all the children of Israel, spoke I a word with any of the tribes of Israel, whom I commanded to feed my people Israel, saying, Why build ye not me a house of cedar? Now therefore, so shalt thou say unto my servant David, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I took thee from the sheep coat, from following the sheep, to be ruler over my people, over Israel. And I was with thee whithersoever thou wentest, and have cut off all thine enemies out of thy sight, and have made thee a great name, like unto the name of the great men who are on the earth. Moreover I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, that they may dwell in a place of their own and move no more, neither shall the children of wickedness afflict them any more, as before. And as since the time that I commanded judges to be over my people Israel and have caused thee to rest from all thine enemies. Also the Lord telleth thee that he will make thee a house. And when thy days be fulfilled and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, I will set up thy seed after thee, who shall proceed out of thy loins, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father, and he shall be my son. If he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men, and with the stripes of the children of men. But my mercy shall not depart away from him, as I took it from Saul, whom I put away before thee. And thine house and thy kingdom shall be established forever before thee, thy throne shall be established forever. According to all these words and according to all this vision, so did Nathan speak unto David. Then went King David in and sat before the Lord, and he said, Who am I, O Lord God? And what is my house, that thou hast brought me hitherto? And this was yet a small thing in thy sight, O Lord God, but thou hast spoken also of thy servant's house for a great while to come. And is this the manner of man, O Lord God? And what can David say more unto thee? 
For thou, Lord God, knowest thy servant. For thy word's sake and according to thine own heart hast thou done all these great things to make thy servant know them. Therefore thou art great, O Lord God, for there is none like thee, neither is there any God besides thee, according to all that we have heard with our ears. And what one nation on the earth is like thy people, even like Israel, whom God went to redeem for a people to himself, and to make him a name and to do for you great things and fearsome for thy land, before thy people whom thou redeemed to thee from Egypt, from the nations and their gods. For thou hast confirmed for thyself thy people Israel to be a people unto thee forever, and thou, Lord, art become their God. And now, O Lord God, the word that thou hast spoken concerning thy servant and concerning his house, establish it forever, and do as thou hast said. And let thy name be magnified forever saying, The Lord of hosts is the God over Israel, and let the house of thy servant David be established before thee. For thou, O Lord of hosts, God of Israel, hast revealed to thy servant, saying, I will build thee a house. Therefore hath thy servant found in his heart to pray this prayer unto thee. And now, O Lord God, thou art that God, and thy words be true, and thou hast promised this goodness unto thy servant. Therefore now let it please thee to bless the house of thy servant, that it may continue forever before thee, for thou, O Lord God, hast spoken it, and with thy blessing let the house of thy servant be blessed forever. And after this it came to pass that David smote the Philistines and subdued them, and David took Methagama out of the hand of the Philistines. And he smote Moab, and measured them with a line, casting them down to the ground, even with two lines measured he those to be put to death, and with one full line those to be kept alive. And so the Moabites became David's servants and brought gifts. David smote also Hadadezer the son of Rehob, king of Zeba, as he went to recover his border at the river Euphrates. And David took from him a thousand chariots, and seven hundred horsemen, and twenty thousand footmen, and David hamstrung all the chariot horses, but reserved enough of them for a hundred chariots. And when the Syrians of Damascus came to succor Hadadezer king of Zeba, David slew of the Syrians two and twenty thousand men. Then David put garrisons in Syria of Damascus, and the Syrians became servants to David and brought gifts. And the Lord preserved David whithersoever he went. And David took the shields of gold that were on the servants of Hadadezer and brought them to Jerusalem. And from Beta and from Barotai, cities of Hadadezer, King David took exceeding much brass. When Toi king of Hamath heard that David had smitten all the host of Hadadezer, then Toi sent Joram his son unto King David to salute him and to bless him, because he had fought against Hadadezer and smitten him, for Hadadezer had wars with Toi. And Joram brought with him vessels of silver and vessels of gold and vessels of brass. Which also King David dedicated unto the Lord, with the silver and gold that he had dedicated of all nations which he subdued. Of Syria, and of Moab, and of the children of Ammon, and of the Philistines, and of Amalek, and of the spoil of Hadadezer son of Rehob, king of Zeba. And David got him a name when he returned from smiting the Syrians in the valley of Salt, being eighteen thousand men. And he put garrisons in Edom, throughout all Edom he put garrisons, and all those of Edom became David's servants. And the Lord preserved David whithersoever he went. And David reigned over all Israel, and David executed judgment and justice unto all his people. And Job the son of Zeruiah was over the host, and Jehoshaphat the son of Ahilad was recorder. And Zadok the son of Ahitab and Ahimelech the son of Abiathar were the priests, and Syria was the scribe. And Benaiah the son of Jehoiada was over both the Cherethites and the Pelethites, and David's sons were chief rulers. And David said, Is there yet any that is left of the house of Saul, that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? And there was of the house of Saul a servant whose name was Zeba. And when they had called him unto David, the king said unto him, Art thou Zeba? And he said, Thy servant is he. And the king said, Is there not yet any of the house of Saul, that I may show the kindness of God unto him? And Zeba said unto the king, Jonathan hath yet a son who is lame in his feet. And the king said unto him, Where is he? And Zeba said unto the king, Behold, he is in the house of Machir, the son of Amiel, in Lodabar. Then king David sent and fetched him out of the house of Machir the son of Amiel, from Lodabar. Now when Mephibosheth the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, had come unto David, he fell on his face and did reverence. And David said, Mephibosheth. And he answered, Behold thy servant. And David said unto him, Fear not, for I will surely show thee kindness for Jonathan thy father's sake, and will restore thee all the land of Saul thy father, and thou shalt eat bread at my table continually. And he bowed himself and said, What is thy servant, 
that thou shouldest look upon such a dead dog as I am. Then the king called to Ziba, Saul's servant, and said unto him, I have given unto thy master's son all that pertain to Saul and to all his house. Thou, therefore, and thy sons and thy servants, shall till the land for him, and thou shalt bring in the fruits, that thy master's son may have food to eat, but Mephibosheth thy master's son shall eat bread always at my table. Now Ziba had fifteen sons and twenty servants. Then said Ziba unto the king, According to all that my lord the king hath commanded his servant, so shall thy servant do. As for Mephibosheth, said the king, he shall eat at my table as one of the king's sons. And Mephibosheth had a young son whose name was Micha. And all who dwelt in the house of Ziba were servants unto Mephibosheth. So Mephibosheth dwelt in Jerusalem, for he ate continually at the king's table, and was lame in both his feet. And it came to pass after this that the king of the children of Ammon died, and Hanun his son reigned in his stead. Then said David, I will show kindness unto Hanun the son of Nahash, as his father showed kindness unto me. And David sent to comfort him by the hand of his servants for his father. And David's servants came into the land of the children of Ammon. And the princes of the children of Ammon said unto Hanun their lord, Thinkest thou that David doth honor thy father, that he hath sent comforters unto thee? Hath not David rather sent his servants unto thee to search the city and to spy it out and to overthrow it? Therefore Hanun took David's servants and shaved off one half of their beards and cut off their garments in the middle, even to their buttocks, and sent them away. When they told it unto David, he sent to meet them, because the men were greatly ashamed. And the king said, Tarry at Jericho until your beards are grown, and then return. And when the children of Ammon saw that they were a stench before David, the children of Ammon sent and hired the Syrians of Bethreob and the Syrians of Zeba, twenty thousand footmen, and of King Maka a thousand men, and of Ishtab twelve thousand men. And when David heard of it, he sent Job and all the host of the mighty men. And the children of Ammon came out and set up in battle array at the entrance to the gate, and the Syrians of Zeba, and of Rehob, and Ishtab, and Maka were by themselves in the field. When Job saw that the front of the battle line was against him before and behind, he chose from all the choice men of Israel and put them in array against the Syrians. And the rest of the people he delivered into the hand of Abishai his brother, that he might put them in array against the children of Ammon. And he said, If the Syrians be too strong for me, then thou shalt help me, but if the children of Ammon be too strong for thee, then I will come and help thee. Be of good courage, and let us play the man for our people and for the cities of our God, and the Lord do that which seemeth to him good. And Job drew nigh, and the people who were with him, unto the battle against the Syrians, and they fled before him. And when the children of Ammon saw that the Syrians had fled, then fled they also before Abishai and entered into the city. So Job returned from the children of Ammon, and came to Jerusalem. And when the Syrians saw that they were smitten before Israel, they gathered themselves together. And Hadadezer sent and brought out the Syrians who were beyond the river, and they came to Helam, and Shobach the captain of the host of Hadadezer went before them. And when it was told David, he gathered all Israel together and passed over the Jordan and came to Helam. And the Syrians set themselves in array against David, and fought with him. And the Syrians fled before Israel, and David slew the men of seven hundred chariots of the Syrians and forty thousand horsemen, and smote Shobach the captain of their host, who died there. And when all the kings who were servants to Hadadezer saw that they were smitten before Israel, they made peace with Israel and served them. So the Syrians feared to help the children of Ammon any more. And it came to pass, after the year was expired, at the time when kings go forth to battle, that David sent Job and his servants with him and all Israel, and they destroyed the children of Ammon and besieged Rabbah. But David tarried still at Jerusalem. And it came to pass in an evening tide that David arose from his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman washing herself, and the woman was very beautiful to look upon. And David sent and inquired after the woman. And one said, Is not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Iliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? And David sent messengers, and took her, and she came in unto him, and he lay with her, for she was purified from her uncleanness, and she returned unto her house. And the woman conceived, and sent, and told David, and said, I am with child. And David sent to Job, saying, Send me Uriah the Hittite. And Job sent Uriah to David. And when Uriah had come unto him, David demanded of him how Job did, and how the people did, and how the war prospered. And David said to Uriah, Go down to thy house and wash thy feet. And Uriah departed out of the king's house, and there followed him a meal of meat from the king. 
but Uriah slept at the door of the king's house with all the servants of his lord, and went not down to his house. And when they had told David, saying, Uriah went not down unto his house, David said unto Uriah, Camest thou not from thy journey? Why then did thou not go down unto thine house? And Uriah said unto David, The ark and Israel and Judah abide in tents, and my lord Job and the servants of my lord are encamped in the open fields, shall I then go into mine house to eat and to drink and to lie with my wife? As thou livest and as thy soul liveth, I will not do this thing. And David said to Uriah, Tarry here today also, and tomorrow I will let thee depart. So Uriah remained in Jerusalem that day and the morrow. And when David had called him, he ate and drank before him, and he made him drunk, and at evening he went out to lie on his bed with the servants of his lord, but went not down to his house. And it came to pass in the morning that David wrote a letter to Job, and sent it by the hand of Uriah. And he wrote in the letter, saying, Set ye Uriah in the forefront of the hottest battle, and retire ye from him, that he may be smitten and die. And it came to pass, when Job observed the city, that he assigned Uriah unto a place where he knew that valiant men were. And the men of the city went out and fought with Job, and there fell some of the people of the servants of David, and Uriah the Hittite died also. Then Job sent and told David all the things concerning the war. And charged the messenger, saying, When thou hast made an end of telling the matters of the war unto the king. And if so be that the king's wrath arise and he say unto thee, Why approached ye so nigh unto the city when ye fought? Knew ye not that they would shoot from the wall? Who smote Abimelech the son of Jerubbesheth? Did not a woman cast a piece of a millstone upon him from the wall, that he died in Thebes? Why went ye nigh the wall? Then say thou, Thy servant Uriah the Hittite is dead also. So the messenger went, and came, and showed David all that Job had sent him for. And the messenger said unto David, Surely the men prevailed against us and came out unto us into the field, and we were upon them even unto the entrance of the gate. And the shooters shot from the wall upon thy servants, and some of the king's servants are dead, and thy servant Uriah the Hittite is dead also. Then David said unto the messenger, Thus shalt thou say unto Job, Let not this thing displease thee, for the sword devoureth one as well as another. Press thy battle stronger against the city, and overthrow it, and encourage thou him. And when the wife of Uriah heard that Uriah her husband was dead, she mourned for her husband. And when the morning was past, David sent and fetched her to his house, and she became his wife and bore him a son. But the thing that David had done displeased the Lord, and the Lord sent Nathan unto David. And he came unto him, and said unto him, There were two men in one city, the one rich and the other poor. The rich man had exceeding many flocks and herds. But the poor man had nothing, save one little ewe lamb, which he had bought and nourished up. And it grew up together with him and with his children, it ate of his own meat and drank of his own cup, and lay in his bosom, and was unto him as a daughter. And there came a traveller unto the rich man, and he was unwilling to take of his own flock and of his own herd to dress for the wayfaring man who had come unto him, but took the poor man's lamb and dressed it for the man who had come to him. And David's anger was greatly kindled against the man, and he said to Nathan, As the Lord liveth, the man who hath done this thing shall surely die. And he shall restore the lamb fourfold, because he did this thing and because he had no pity. And Nathan said to David, Thou art the man. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I anointed thee king over Israel, and I delivered thee out of the hand of Saul. And I gave thee thy master's house and thy master's wives into thy bosom, and gave thee the house of Israel and of Judah, and if that had been too little, I would moreover have given unto thee such and such things. Why hast thou despised the commandment of the Lord, to do evil in his sight? Thou hast killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword, and hast taken his wife to be thy wife, and hast slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon. Now therefore the sword shall never depart from thine house, because thou hast despised me and hast taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be thy wife. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will raise up evil against thee out of thine own house, and I will take thy wives before thine eyes and give them unto thy neighbor, and he shall lie with thy wives in the sight of this son. For thou did it secretly, but I will do this thing before all Israel and before the son. And David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said unto David, The Lord also hath put away thy sin, thou shalt not die. However, because by this deed thou hast given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme, the child also who is born unto thee shall surely die. And Nathan departed unto his house. And the Lord struck the child that Uriah's wife bore unto David, and it was very sick. David therefore besought God for the child, 
and David fasted, and went in and lay all night upon the earth. And the elders of his house arose and went to him to raise him up from the earth, but he would not, neither did he eat bread with them. And it came to pass on the seventh day that the child died. And the servants of David feared to tell him that the child was dead, for they said, Behold, while the child was yet alive, we spoke unto him, and he would not hearken unto our voice. How will he then vex himself if we tell him that the child is dead? But when David saw that his servants whispered, David perceived that the child was dead. Therefore David said unto his servants, Is the child dead? And they said, He is dead. Then David arose from the earth, and washed and anointed himself and changed his apparel, and came into the house of the Lord, and worshipped. Then he came to his own house, and when he required, they set bread before him and he ate. Then said his servants unto him, What thing is this that thou hast done? Thou did fast and weep for the child while it was alive, but when the child was dead, thou did rise and eat bread. And he said, While the child was yet alive, I fasted and wept, for I said, Who can tell whether God will be gracious to me, that the child may live? But now he is dead, why should I fast? Can I bring him back again? I shall go to him, but he shall not return to me. And David comforted Bathsheba his wife, and went in unto her and lay with her. And she bore a son, and he called his name Solomon, and the Lord loved him. And he sent by the hand of Nathan the prophet, and he called his name Jedidiah that is, beloved of the Lord, because of the Lord. And Job fought against Rabbah of the children of Ammon, and took the royal city. And Job sent messengers to David and said, I have fought against Rabbah and have taken from the city its waters. Now therefore gather the rest of the people together and encamp against the city and take it, lest I take the city and it be called after my name. And David gathered all the people together and went to Rabbah, and fought against it, and took it. And he took their king's crown from off his head, the weight of which was a talent of gold with the precious stones, and it was set on David's head. And he brought forth the spoil of the city in great abundance. And he brought forth the people who were therein, and put them under saws, and under harrows of iron, and under axes of iron, and made them pass through the brick kill, and thus did he unto all the cities of the children of Ammon. So David and all the people returned unto Jerusalem. And it came to pass after this that Absalom the son of David had a fair sister, whose name was Tamar, and Amnon the son of David loved her. And Amnon was so vexed that he fell sick for his sister Tamar, for she was a virgin, and Amnon thought it hard for him to do anything to her. But Amnon had a friend whose name was Jonadab, the son of Shimea David's brother, and Jonadab was a very subtle man. And he said unto him, Why art thou, being the king's son, lean from day to day? Wilt thou not tell me? And Amnon said unto him, I love Tamar, my brother Absalom's sister. And Jonadab said unto him, Lay thee down on thy bed and make thyself sick, and when thy father cometh to see thee, say unto him, I pray thee, let my sister Tamar come and give me meat, and dress the meat in my sight, that I may see it and eat it at her hand. So Amnon lay down and made himself sick, and when the king came to see him, Amnon said unto the king, I pray thee, let Tamar my sister come and make me a couple of cakes in my sight, that I may eat at her hand. Then David sent home to Tamar, saying, Go now to thy brother Amnon's house, and dress him meat. So Tamar went to her brother Amnon's house, and he was lying down. And she took flour and kneaded it, and made cakes in his sight, and baked the cakes. And she took a pan and poured them out before him, but he refused to eat. And Amnon said, Send out all men from me. And they went out every man from him. And Amnon said unto Tamar, Bring the meat into the chamber, that I may eat from thine hand. And Tamar took the cakes which she had made, and brought them into the chamber to Amnon her brother. And when she had brought them unto him to eat, he took hold of her and said unto her, Come lie with me, my sister. And she answered him, Nay, my brother, do not force me, for no such thing ought to be done in Israel. Do not thou this folly. And I, whither shall I cause my shame to go? And as for thee, thou shalt be as one of the fools in Israel. Now therefore, I pray thee, speak unto the king, for he will not withhold me from thee. Nevertheless he would not hearken unto her voice, but, being stronger than she, forced her, and lay with her. Then Amnon hated her exceedingly, so that the hatred wherewith he hated her was greater than the love wherewith he had loved her. And Amnon said unto her, Arise, be gone. And she said unto him, There is no cause. This evil in sending me away is greater than the other that thou did unto me. 
but he would not hearken unto her. Then he called his servant who ministered unto him and said, Put now this woman out from me, and bolt the door after her. And she had a garment of divers colors upon her, for with such robes were the king's daughters who were virgins apparelled. Then his servant brought her out, and bolted the door after her. And Tamar put ashes on her head, and rent her garment of divers colors that was on her, and laid her hand on her head and went on crying. And Absalom her brother said unto her, Hath Amnon thy brother been with thee? But hold now thy peace, my sister. He is thy brother, regard not this thing. So Tamar remained desolate in her brother Absalom's house. But when King David heard of all these things, he was very wroth. And Absalom spoke unto his brother Amnon neither good nor bad, for Absalom hated Amnon, because he had forced his sister Tamar. And it came to pass after two full years that Absalom had sheep shearers in Baal Hazer, which is beside Ephraim, and Absalom invited all the king's sons. And Absalom came to the king and said, Behold now, thy servant hath sheep shearers, let the king, I beseech thee, and his servants go with thy servant. And the king said to Absalom, Nay, my son, let us not all now go, lest we be a burden unto thee. And he pressed him, however he would not go, but blessed him. Then said Absalom, If not, I pray thee, let my brother Amnon go with us. And the king said unto him, Why should he go with thee? But Absalom pressed him, so that he let Amnon and all the king's sons go with him. Now Absalom had commanded his servants, saying, Mark ye now when Amnon's heart is merry with wine, and when I say unto you, Smite Amnon, then kill him. Fear not. Have not I commanded you? Be courageous and be valiant. And the servants of Absalom did unto Amnon as Absalom had commanded. Then all the king's sons arose, and every man got himself up upon his mule and fled. And it came to pass, while they were on the way, that tidings came to David, saying, Absalom hath slain all the king's sons, and there is not one of them left. Then the king arose and tore his garments, and lay on the earth, and all his servants stood by with their clothes rent. And Jonadab the son of Shimea, David's brother, answered and said, Let not my lord suppose that they have slain all the young men, the king's sons, for Amnon only is dead, for by the appointment of Absalom this hath been determined from the day that he forced his sister Tamar. Now therefore let not my lord the king take the thing to his heart, to think that all the king's sons are dead, for Amnon only is dead. But Absalom fled. And the young man who kept the watch lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, there came many people by the way of the hillside behind him. And Jonadab said unto the king, Behold, the king's sons come. As thy servant said, so it is. And it came to pass, as soon as he had made an end of speaking, that behold, the king's sons came, and lifted up their voice and wept, and the king also and all his servants wept very sorely. But Absalom fled, and went to Talmud the son of Amahad, king of Geshur. And David mourned for his son every day. So Absalom fled and went to Geshur, and was there three years. And the soul of King David longed to go forth unto Absalom, for he was comforted concerning Amnon, seeing he was dead. Now Job the son of Zeruiah perceived that the king's heart was toward Absalom. And Job sent to Tako, and fetched thence a wise woman, and said unto her, I pray thee, feign thyself to be a mourner, and put on now mourning apparel, and anoint not thyself with oil. But be as a woman that had a long time mourned for the dead, and come to the king and speak in this manner unto him. So Job put the words in her mouth. And when the woman of Tekoa spoke to the king, she fell on her face to the ground and did obeisance, and said, Help, O king. And the king said unto her, What aileth thee? And she answered, I am indeed a widow woman, and mine husband is dead. And thy handmaid had two sons, and the two strove together in the field, and there was none to part them, but the one smote the other and slew him. And behold, the whole family has risen against thine handmaid, and they said, Deliver him that smote his brother, that we may kill him for the life of his brother whom he slew, and we will destroy the heir also. And so they shall quench my coal which is left, and shall leave to my husband neither name nor remnant upon the earth. And the king said unto the woman, Go to thine house, and I will give charge concerning thee. And the woman of Tekoa said unto the king, My lord, O king, the iniquity be on me and on my father's house, and the king and his throne be guiltless. And the king said, Whosoever saith aught unto thee, bring him to me, and he shall not touch thee any more. Then said she, I pray thee, let the king remember the Lord thy God, that thou wouldest not suffer the avengers of blood to destroy any more, lest they destroy my son. 
And he said, As the Lord liveth, there shall not one hair of thy son fall to the earth. Then the woman said, Let thine handmaid, I pray thee, speak one word unto my lord the king. And he said, Say on. And the woman said, Why then hast thou thought such a thing against the people of God? For the king doth speak this thing as one who is faulty, in that the king doth not fetch home again his banished. For we must needs die, and are as water spilled on the ground, which cannot be gathered up again, neither doth God respect any person. Yet doth he devise means, that his banished be not expelled from him. Now therefore, why I have come to speak of this thing unto my lord the king, it is because the people have made me afraid. And thy handmaid said, I will now speak unto the king. It may be that the king will perform the request of his handmaid. For the king will hear, to deliver his handmaid out of the hand of the man who would destroy me and my son together out of the inheritance of God. Then thine handmaid said, The word of my lord the king shall now be comforting, for as an angel of God, so is my lord the king to discern good and bad. Therefore the Lord thy God will be with thee. Then the king answered and said unto the woman, Hide not from me, I pray thee, the thing that I shall ask thee. And the woman said, Let my lord the king now speak. And the king said, Is not the hand of Job with thee in all this? And the woman answered and said, As thy soul liveth, my lord the king, none can turn to the right hand or to the left from aught that my lord the king hath spoken, for thy servant Job, he bade me, and he put all these words in the mouth of thine handmaid. To bring about this manner of speech hath thy servant Job done this thing, and my Lord is wise, according to the wisdom of an angel of God, to know all things that are in the earth. And the king said unto Job, Behold now, I have done this thing. Go therefore, bring the young man Absalom again. And Job fell to the ground on his face, and bowed himself, and thanked the king, and Job said, Today thy servant knoweth that I have found grace in thy sight, my Lord, O king, in that the king hath fulfilled the request of his servant. So Job arose and went to Geshur, and brought Absalom to Jerusalem. And the king said, Let him turn to his own house, and let him not see my face. So Absalom returned to his own house, and saw not the king's face. But in all Israel there was none to be so much praised as Absalom for his beauty, from the sole of his foot even to the crown of his head there was no blemish in him. And when he cut his hair for it was at every year's end that he cut it, because the hair was heavy on him, therefore he cut it, he weighed the hair of his head at two hundred shekels according to the king's weight. And unto Absalom there were born three sons, and one daughter whose name was Tamar, she was a woman of a fair countenance. So Absalom dwelt two full years in Jerusalem, and saw not the king's face. Therefore Absalom sent for Job to send him to the king, but he would not come to him, and when he sent again the second time, he would not come. Therefore he said unto his servants, See, Job's field is near mine, and he hath barley there, go and set it on fire. And Absalom's servants set the field on fire. Then Job arose and came to Absalom unto his house, and said unto him, Why have thy servants set my field on fire? And Absalom answered Job, Behold, I sent unto thee, saying, Come hither, that I may send thee to the king to say, Why have I come from Geshur? It had been good for me to have been there still. Now therefore let me see the king's face, and if there be any iniquity in me, let him kill me. So Job came to the king and told him. And when he had called for Absalom, he came to the king and bowed himself on his face to the ground before the king, and the king kissed Absalom. And it came to pass after this that Absalom prepared himself chariots and horses and fifty men to run before him. And Absalom rose up early and stood beside the way of the gate, and it was so that, when any man who had a controversy came to the king for judgment, then Absalom called unto him and said, Of what city art thou? And he said, thy servant is of one of the tribes of Israel. And Absalom said unto him, See, thy matters are good and right, but there is no man deputed by the king to hear thee. Absalom said moreover, Oh, that I were made judge in the land, that every man who hath any suit or cause might come unto me, and I would do him justice. And it was so that, when any man came nigh to him to do him obeisance, he put forth his hand and took him and kissed him. And in this manner did Absalom to all Israel who came to the king for judgment, so Absalom stole the hearts of the men of Israel. And it came to pass after forty years, that Absalom said unto the king, I pray thee, let me go and pay my vow which I have vowed unto the Lord in Hebron. For thy servant vowed a vow while I abode at Geshur in Syria, saying, If the Lord shall bring me again indeed to Jerusalem, then I will serve the Lord. And the king said unto him, Go in peace. So he arose and went to Hebron. 
But Absalom sent spies throughout all the tribes of Israel, saying, As soon as ye hear the sound of the trumpet, then ye shall say, Absalom reigneth in Hebron. And with Absalom went two hundred men out of Jerusalem who were called, and they went in their simplicity, and they knew not anything. And Absalom sent for Ahithophel the Jelonite, David's counselor, from his city, even from Gilo, while he offered sacrifices. And the conspiracy was strong, for the people increased continually with Absalom. And there came a messenger to David, saying, The hearts of the men of Israel are after Absalom. And David said unto all his servants who were with him at Jerusalem, Arise, and let us flee, for we shall not else escape from Absalom. Make speed to depart, lest he overtake us suddenly and bring evil upon us, and smite the city with the edge of the sword. And the king's servants said unto the king, Behold, thy servants are ready to do whatsoever my lord the king shall appoint. And the king went forth, and all his household after him. And the king left ten women, who were concubines, to keep the house. And the king went forth, and all the people after him, and tarried in a place that was far off. And all his servants passed on beside him, and all the Cherethites and all the Polythites and all the Gittites, six hundred men who came after him from Gath, passed on before the king. Then said the king to Atai the Gittite, Why goest thou also with us? Return to thy place and abide with the king, for thou art a stranger and also an exile. Whereas thou camest but yesterday, should I this day make thee go up and down with us? Seeing I go whither I may, return thou and take back thy brethren. Mercy and truth be with thee. And Atai answered the king and said, As the Lord liveth and as my lord the king liveth, surely in what place my lord the king shall be, whether in death or life, even there also will thy servant be. And David said to Atai, Go, and pass over. And Atai the Gittite passed over, and all his men and all the little ones who were with him. And all the country wept with a loud voice, and all the people passed over. The king also himself passed over the brook Kidron, and all the people passed over toward the way of the wilderness. And lo, Zadok also, and all the Levites were with him bearing the Ark of the Covenant of God, and they set down the Ark of God, and Abiathar went up until all the people had passed out of the city. And the king said unto Zadok, Carry back the Ark of God into the city. If I shall find favor in the eyes of the Lord, he will bring me back, and show me both it and his habitation. But if he thus say, I have no delight in thee, behold, here am I. Let him do to me as seemeth good unto him. The king said also unto Zadok the priest, Art not thou a seer? Return into the city in peace, and your two sons with you, Ahimaz thy son, and Jonathan the son of Abiathar. See, I will tarry in the plain of the wilderness until there come word from you to assure me. Zadok therefore and Abiathar carried the ark of God back to Jerusalem, and they tarried there. And David went up by the ascent of Mount Olivet, and wept as he went up, and he had his head covered and went barefoot. And all the people who were with him covered every man his head, and they went up, weeping as they went up. And one told David, saying, Ahithophel is among the conspirators with Absalom. And David said, O Lord, I pray thee, turn the counsel of Ahithophel into foolishness. And it came to pass, when David had come to the top of the mount where he worshipped God, that, behold, Hushai the archite came to meet him with his coat rent, and earth upon his head. Unto whom David said, If thou passest on with me, then thou shalt be a burden unto me. But if thou return to the city and say unto Absalom, I will be thy servant, O king, as I have been thy father's servant hitherto, so will I now also be thy servant, then mayest thou for me defeat the counsel of Ahithophel. And hast thou not there with thee Zadok and Abiathar the priests? Therefore it shall be that what thing soever thou shalt hear out of the king's house, thou shalt tell it to Zadok and Abiathar the priests. Behold, they have there with them their two sons, Ahamaz, Zadok's son, and Jonathan, Abiathar's son, and by them ye shall send unto me everything that ye can hear. So Hushai, David's friend, came into the city, and Absalom came into Jerusalem. And when David was a little past the top of the hill, behold, Ziba the servant of Mephibosheth met him with a couple of asses saddled, and upon them two hundred loaves of bread, and a hundred bunches of raisins, and a hundred of summer fruits, and a bottle of wine. And the king said unto Ziba, What meanest thou by these? And Ziba said, The asses are for the king's household to ride on, and the bread and summer fruit for the young men to eat, and the wine, that such as be faint in the wilderness may drink. And the king said, And where is thy master's son? And Ziba said unto the king, Behold, he abideth at Jerusalem, for he said, 
Today shall the house of Israel restore to me the kingdom of my father. Then said the king to Ziba, Behold, thine are all that pertained unto Mephibosheth. And Ziba said, I humbly beseech thee that I may find grace in thy sight, my lord, O king. And when king David came to Bahurim, behold, thence came out a man of the family of the house of Saul, whose name was Shimei, the son of Gera, he came forth, and cursed constantly as he came. And he cast stones at David and at all the servants of King David, and all the people and all the mighty men were on his right hand and on his left. And thus said Shimei when he cursed, Come out, come out, thou bloody man and thou man of Belial. The Lord hath returned upon thee all the blood of the house of Saul, in whose stead thou hast reigned, and the Lord hath delivered the kingdom into the hand of Absalom thy son. And behold, thou art taken in thy mischief, because thou art a bloody man. Then said Abishai the son of Zeruiah unto the king, Why should this dead dog curse my lord the king? Let me go over, I pray thee, and take off his head. And the king said, What have I to do with you, ye sons of Zeruiah? So let him curse, because the Lord hath said unto him, Curse David. Who shall then say, Why hast thou done so? And David said to Abishai and to all his servants, Behold, my son, who came forth from my loins, seeked my life. How much more now may this Benjamite do it? Let him alone and let him curse, for the Lord hath bidden him. It may be that the Lord will look on mine affliction, and that the Lord will requite me good for his cursing this day. And as David and his men went by the way, Shimei went along on the hillside opposite him and cursed as he went and threw stones at him and cast dust. And the king and all the people who were with him became weary and refreshed themselves there. And Absalom and all the people, the men of Israel, came to Jerusalem, and Ahitho fell with him. And it came to pass, when Hushai the archite, David's friend, had come unto Absalom, that Hushai said unto Absalom, God save the king. God save the king. And Absalom said to Hushai, Is this thy kindness to thy friend? Why wentest thou not with thy friend? And Hushai said unto Absalom, Nay, but whom the Lord and this people and all the men of Israel choose, his will I be, and with him will I abide. And again, whom should I serve? Should I not serve in the presence of his son? As I have served in thy father's presence, so will I be in thy presence. Then said Absalom to Ahithophel, Give counsel among you what we shall do. And Ahithophel said unto Absalom, Go in unto thy father's concubines, whom he hath left to keep the house, and all Israel shall hear that thou art abhorred by thy father. Then shall the hands of all who are with thee be strong. So they spread Absalom a tent upon the top of the house, and Absalom went in unto his father's concubines in the sight of all Israel. And the counsel of Ahithophel, which he counseled in those days, was as if a man had inquired at the oracle of God, so was all the counsel of Ahithophel both with David and with Absalom. Moreover Ahithophel said unto Absalom, Let me now choose out twelve thousand men, and I will arise and pursue after David this night. And I will come upon him while he is weary and weak-handed, and will make him afraid, and all the people who are with him shall flee, and I will smite the king only. And I will bring back all the people unto thee, the man whom thou seekest is as if all returned, so all the people shall be in peace. And the saying pleased Absalom well, and all the elders of Israel. Then said Absalom, Call now Hushai the archite also, and let us hear likewise what he saith. And when Hushai had come to Absalom, Absalom spoke unto him, saying, Ahithophel hath spoken in this manner. Shall we do according to his word? If not, speak thou. And Hushai said unto Absalom, The counsel that Ahithophel hath given is not good at this time. For, said Hushai, Thou knowest thy father and his men, that they are mighty men, and they are chafed in their minds, as a bear robbed of her whelps in the field, and thy father is a man of war, and will not lodge with the people. Behold, he is hid now in some pit, or in some other place, and it will come to pass, when some of them are overthrown at the first, that whosoever heareth it will say, There is a slaughter among the people who follow Absalom. And he also that is valiant, whose heart is as the heart of a lion, shall utterly melt, for all Israel knoweth that thy father is a mighty man, and those who are with him are valiant men. Therefore I counsel that all Israel be generally gathered unto thee, from Dan even to Beersheba, as the sand that is by the sea for multitude, and that thou go to battle in thine own person. So shall we come upon him in some place where he shall be found, and we will light upon him as the dew falleth on the ground, and of him and of all the men who are with him there shall not be left so much as one. Moreover, if he be gotten into a city, 
Then shall all Israel bring ropes to that city, and we will draw it into the river, until there be not one small stone found there. And Absalom and all the men of Israel said, The counsel of Hushai the Archite is better than the counsel of Ahithophel. For the Lord had appointed to defeat the good counsel of Ahithophel, with the intent that the Lord might bring evil upon Absalom. Then said Hushai unto Zadok and to Abiathar the priests, Thus and thus did Ahithophel counsel Absalom and the elders of Israel, and thus and thus have I counseled. Now therefore send quickly and tell David, saying, Lodge not this night in the plains of the wilderness, but speedily pass over, lest the king be swallowed up and all the people who are with him. Now Jonathan and Ahimaaz stayed by Enrogel, for they dared not be seen to come into the city, and a maidservant went and told them, and they went and told King David. Nevertheless a lad saw them, and told Absalom, but they went both of them away quickly, and came to a man's house in Bahurim, who had a well in his court, whither they went down. And the woman took and spread a covering over the well's mouth, and spread ground corn thereon, and the thing was not known. And when Absalom's servants came to the woman to the house, they said, Where are Ahimaaz and Jonathan? And the woman said unto them, They have gone over the brook of water. And when they had sought and could not find them, they returned to Jerusalem. And it came to pass, after they had departed, that they came up out of the well and went and told King David, and said unto David, Arise, and pass quickly over the water, for thus hath Ahithophel counseled against you. Then David arose, and all the people who were with him, and they passed over the Jordan. By the morning light there lacked not one of them who had not gone over the Jordan. And when Ahithophel saw that his counsel was not followed, he saddled his ass, and arose and got him home to his house, to his city, and put his household in order, and hanged himself, and died, and was buried in the sepulchre of his father. Then David came to Mahanaim. And Absalom passed over the Jordan, he and all the men of Israel with him. And Absalom made Amasa captain of the host instead of Job. This Amasa was a man's son whose name was Ithra, an Israelite, who went into Abigail the daughter of Nahash, sister to Zeruia Job's mother. So Israel and Absalom pitched camp in the land of Gilead. And it came to pass, when David had come to Mahanaim, that Shobi the son of Nahash of Rabbah of the children of Ammon, and Machir the son of Amiel of Lodabar, and Barzilla the Jalidite of Rajlim, brought beds and basins and earthen vessels and wheat and barley and flour and parched corn, and beans and lentils and parched pulse, and honey and butter and sheep and cheese from cows, for David and for the people who were with him to eat. For they said, the people are hungry and weary and thirsty in the wilderness. And David numbered the people that were with him, and set captains of thousands, and captains of hundreds over them. And David sent forth a third part of the people under the hand of Job, and a third part under the hand of Abishai the son of Zeruiah, Job's brother, and a third part under the hand of Ittai the Gittite. And the king said unto the people, I will surely go forth with you myself also. But the people answered, Thou shalt not go forth, for if we flee away, they will not care for us, neither if half of us die will they care for us. But now thou art worth ten thousand of us, therefore now it is better that thou succor us from the city. And the king said unto them, What seemeth to you best I will do? And the king stood by the gate side, and all the people came out by hundreds and by thousands. And the king commanded Job and Abishai and Ittai, saying, Deal gently for my sake with the young man, even with Absalom. And all the people heard when the king gave all the captains charge concerning Absalom. So the people went out into the field against Israel. And the battle was in the wood of Ephraim, where the people of Israel were slain before the servants of David, and there was there a great slaughter that day of twenty thousand men. For the battle there was scattered over the face of all the country, and the woods devoured more people that day than the sword devoured. And Absalom met the servants of David. And Absalom rode upon a mule, and the mule went under the thick boughs of a great oak, and his head caught hold of the oak, and he was taken up between the heaven and the earth, and the mule that was under him went away. And a certain man saw it, and told Job and said, Behold, I saw Absalom hanged in an oak. And Job said unto the man who told him, And behold, thou sawest him, and why did thou not smite him there to the ground? And I would have given thee ten shekels of silver and a girdle. And the man said unto Job, Though I should receive a thousand shekels of silver in mine hand, yet would I not put forth mine hand against the king's son, for in our hearing the king charged thee and Abishai and Ittai, saying, Beware that none touch the young man Absalom. Otherwise I should have wrought falsehood against mine own life, for there is no matter hid from the king, and thou thyself wouldest have set thyself against me. Then said Job, I may not tarry thus with thee. 
and he took three darts in his hand, and thrust them through the heart of Absalom while he was yet alive in the midst of the oak. And ten young men who bore Job's armor compassed about and smote Absalom, and slew him. And Job blew the trumpet, and the people returned from pursuing after Israel, for Job held back the people. And they took Absalom and cast him into a great pit in the wood, and laid a very great heap of stones upon him, and all Israel fled every one to his tent. Now Absalom in his lifetime had taken and reared up for himself a pillar, which is in the king's dale, for he said, I have no son to keep my name in remembrance. And he called the pillar after his own name, and it is called unto this day, Absalom's place. Then said Ahimaaz the son of Zadok, Let me now run and bear the king tidings, how the Lord hath avenged him of his enemies. And Job said unto him, Thou shalt not bear tidings this day, but thou shalt bear tidings another day, but this day thou shalt bear no tidings, because the king's son is dead. Then said Job to a Cushite, Go, tell the king what thou hast seen. And the Cushite bowed himself unto Job and ran. Then said Ahimaaz the son of Zadok yet again to Job, But come what may, let me, I pray thee, also run after the Cushite. And Job said, Why wilt thou run, my son, seeing that thou hast no tidings ready? But howsoever, said he, let me run. And he said unto him, Run. Then Ahimaaz ran by the way of the plain, and outran the Cushite. And David sat between the two gates, and the watchman went up to the roof over the gate unto the wall, and lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, a man running alone. And the watchman cried and told the king. And the king said, If he be alone, there are tidings in his mouth. And he came apace and drew near. And the watchman saw another man running, and the watchman called unto the gatekeeper and said, Behold, another man running alone. And the king said, He also bringeth tidings. And the watchman said, I think the running of the foremost is like the running of Ahimaaz the son of Zadok. And the king said, He is a good man, and cometh with good tidings. And Ahimaaz called and said unto the king, All is well. And he fell down to the earth upon his face before the king and said, Blessed be the Lord thy God, who hath delivered up the men who lifted up their hand against my lord the king. And the king said, Is the young man Absalom safe? And Ahimaaz answered, When Job sent the king's servant and me thy servant, I saw a great tumult, but I knew not what it was. And the king said unto him, Turn aside and stand here. And he turned aside and stood still. And behold, the Cushite came, and the Cushite said, Tidings, my lord the king, for the Lord hath avenged thee this day of all those who rose up against thee. And the king said unto the Cushite, Is the young man Absalom safe? And the Cushite answered, The enemies of my lord the king, and all who rise against thee to do thee hurt, be as that young man is. And the king was much moved, and went up to the chamber over the gate and wept. And as he went, thus he said, O my son Absalom, my son, my son Absalom! Would God I had died for thee, O Absalom, my son, my son! And it was told Job, Behold, the king weepeth and mourneth for Absalom. And the victory that day was turned into mourning unto all the people, for the people heard say that day how the king was grieved for his son. And the people got themselves by stealth that day into the city, as people being ashamed steal away when they flee in battle. But the king covered his face, and the king cried with a loud voice, O my son Absalom, O Absalom, my son, my son. And Job came into the house to the king, and said, Thou hast shamed this day the faces of all thy servants who this day have saved thy life and the lives of thy sons and of thy daughters, and the lives of thy wives and the lives of thy concubines. In that thou lovest thine enemies and hatest thy friends. For thou hast declared this day that thou regardest neither princes nor servants, for this day I perceive that if Absalom had lived and all we had died this day, then it had pleased thee well. Now therefore arise, go forth, and speak comfortingly unto thy servants. For I swear by the Lord, if thou go not forth, there will not tarry one with thee this night, and that will be worse unto thee than all the evil that befell thee from thy youth until now. Then the king arose and sat in the gate. And they told unto all the people, saying, Behold, the king doth sit in the gate. And all the people came before the king, for Israel had fled every man to his tent. And all the people were in strife throughout all the tribes of Israel, saying, The king saved us out of the hand of our enemies, and he delivered us out of the hand of the Philistines, and now he has fled out of the land because of Absalom. And Absalom, whom we anointed over us, is dead in battle. Now therefore, why speak ye not a word of bringing the king back? And King David sent to Zadok and to Abiathar the priests, saying, 
speak unto the elders of Judah, saying, Why are ye the last to bring the king back to his house, seeing the speech of all Israel has come to the king, even to his house? Ye are my brethren, ye are my bones and my flesh. Why then are ye the last to bring back the king? And say ye to Amasa, Art thou not of my bone and of my flesh? God do so to me, and more also, if thou be not captain of the host before me continually in place of Job. And he bowed the heart of all the men of Judah, even as the heart of one man, so that they sent this word unto the king, Return thou, and all thy servants. So the king returned and came to the Jordan. And Judah came to Gilgal to go to meet the king, to conduct the king over the Jordan. And Shimei the son of Gera, a Benjamite, who was of Bahurim, hastened and came down with the men of Judah to meet King David. And there were a thousand men of Benjamin with him, and Ziba the servant of the house of Saul, and his fifteen sons and his twenty servants with him, and they went over the Jordan before the king. And there went over a ferry boat to carry over the king's household, and to do what he thought good. And Shimei the son of Gera fell down before the king as he was coming over the Jordan, and said unto the king, Let not my lord impute iniquity unto me, neither do thou remember that which thy servant did perversely the day that my lord the king went out of Jerusalem. That the king should take it to his heart, for thy servant doth know that I have sinned. Therefore, behold, I have come the first this day of all the house of Joseph to go down to meet my lord the king. But Abishai the son of Zeruiah answered and said, Shall not Shimei be put to death for this, because he cursed the Lord's anointed? And David said, What have I to do with you, ye sons of Zeruiah, that ye should this day be adversaries unto me? Shall there any man be put to death this day in Israel? For do not I know that I am this day king over Israel? Therefore the king said unto Shimei, Thou shalt not die. And the king swore unto him. And Mephibosheth the son of Saul came down to meet the king, and had neither dressed his feet, nor trimmed his beard, nor washed his clothes from the day the king departed until the day he came again in peace. And it came to pass, when he had come to Jerusalem to meet the king, that the king said unto him, Why wentest not thou with me, Mephibosheth? And he answered, My lord, O king, my servant deceived me, for thy servant said, I will saddle me an ass, that I may ride thereon and go to the king, because thy servant is Lame. And he hath slandered thy servant unto my lord the king, but my lord the king is as an angel of God. Do therefore what is good in thine eyes. For all of my father's house were but dead men before my lord the king, yet did thou set thy servant among those who ate at thine own table. What right therefore have I yet to cry any more unto the king? And the king said unto him, Why speakest thou any more of thy matters? I have said, Thou and Ziba divide the land. And Mephibosheth said unto the king, Yeah, let him take all forasmuch as my lord the king has come again in peace unto his own house. And Barzillah the Jalidite came down from Rajlim, and went over the Jordan with the king to conduct him over the Jordan. Now Barzillah was a very aged man, even fourscore years old, and he had provided the king with sustenance while he lay at Mahanaim, for he was a very great man. And the king said unto Barzillah, Come thou over with me, and I will feed thee with me in Jerusalem. And Barzillah said unto the king, How long have I to live? that I should go up with the king unto Jerusalem? I am this day fourscore years old, and can I discern between good and evil? Can thy servant taste what I eat or what I drink? Can I hear any more the voice of singing men and singing women? Why then should thy servant be yet a burden unto my lord the king? Thy servant will go a little way over the Jordan with the king. And why should the king recompense me with such a reward? Let thy servant, I pray thee, turn back again, that I may die in mine own city and be buried by the grave of my father and of my mother. But behold thy servant Chimam. Let him go over with my lord the king, and do to him what shall seem good unto thee. And the king answered, Chimam shall go over with me, and I will do to him that which shall seem good unto thee. And whatsoever thou shalt require of me, that will I do for thee. And all the people went over the Jordan. And when the king had come over, the king kissed Barzillah and blessed him, and he returned unto his own place. Then the king went on to Gilgal, and Shimam went on with him, and all the people of Judah conducted the king, and also half the people of Israel. And behold, all the men of Israel came to the king and said unto the king, Why have our brethren, the men of Judah, stolen thee away, and have brought the king and his household and all David's men with him over the Jordan? And all the men of Judah answered the men of Israel, Because the king is near of kin to us. Why then be ye angry for this matter? Have we eaten at all at the king's cost? Or hath he given us any gift? And the men of Israel answered the men of Judah and said, 
we have ten parts in the king, and we have also more right in David than yet. Why then did ye despise us, that our advice should not be first had in bringing back our king? And the words of the men of Judah were fiercer than the words of the men of Israel. And there happened to be there a man of Belial, whose name was Sheba the son of Bichri, a Benjamite. And he blew a trumpet and said, We have no part in David, neither have we inheritance in the son of Jesse. Every man to his tents, O Israel. So every man of Israel went up from after David and followed Sheba the son of Bichri, but the men of Judah cleaved unto their king, from the Jordan even to Jerusalem. And David came to his house at Jerusalem, and the king took the ten women, his concubines whom he had left to keep the house, and put them in custody and fed them, but went not in unto them. So they were shut up unto the day of their death, living in widowhood. Then said the king to Amasa, Assemble me the men of Judah within three days, and be thou present here. So Amasa went to assemble the men of Judah, but he tarried longer than the set time which he had appointed him. And David said to Abishai, Now shall Sheba the son of Bichri do us more harm than did Absalom. Take thou thy lord's servants and pursue after him, lest he get himself fort Ephed cities and escape us. And there went out after him Job's men and the Cherethites and the Polythites and all the mighty men, and they went out of Jerusalem to pursue after Sheba the son of Bichri. When they were at the great stone which is in Gibeon, Amasa went before them. And Job's garment that he had put on was girded unto him, and upon it a girdle with a sword fastened upon his loins in the sheath thereof, and as he went forth, it fell out. And Job said to Amasa, Art thou in health, my brother? And Job took Amasa by the beard with the right hand to kiss him. But Amasa took no heed of the sword that was in Job's hand, so Job smote him there within the fifth rib, and shed out his bowels to the ground, and struck him not again, and he died. So Job and Abishai his brother pursued after Sheba the son of Bichri. And one of Job's men stood by him and said, He that favoreth Job and he that is for David, let him follow after Job. And Amasa wallowed in blood in the midst of the highway. And when the man saw that all the people stood still, he removed Amasa out of the highway into the field and cast a cloth upon him, when he saw that everyone who came by him stood still. When he was removed out of the highway, all the people went on after Job to pursue after Sheba the son of Bichri. And Sheba went through all the tribes of Israel unto Abel and to Beth Macha and all the Berites, and they were gathered together, and went also with him. And they came and besieged him in Abel of Beth Macha, and they cast up a siege bank against the city, and it stood in the trench, and all the people who were with Job battered the wall to throw it down. Then cried a wise woman out of the city, Here, here. Say, I pray you, unto Job, come near hither, that I may speak with thee. And when he had come near unto her, the woman said, Art thou Job? And he answered, I am he. Then she said unto him, Hear the words of thine handmaid. And he answered, I do hear. Then she spoke, saying, They were wont to speak in olden times, saying, They shall surely ask counsel at Abel, and so they ended the matter. I am one of those who are peaceable and faithful in Israel. Thou seekest to destroy a city and a mother in Israel. Why wilt thou swallow up the inheritance of the Lord? And Job answered and said, Far be it, far be it from me that I should swallow up or destroy. The matter is not so, but a man of Mount Ephraim, Sheba the son of Bichri by name, hath lifted up his hand against the king, even against David. Deliver him only, and I will depart from the city. And the woman said unto Job, Behold, his head shall be thrown to thee over the wall. Then the woman went unto all the people in her wisdom. And they cut off the head of Sheba the son of Bichri, and cast it out to Job. And he blew a trumpet, and they retired from the city, every man to his tent. And Job returned to Jerusalem unto the king. Now Job was over all the host of Israel, and Benaiah the son of Jehoiada was over the Cherethites and over the Polythites. And Adoram was over the tribute, and Jehoshaphat the son of Ahilad was recorder. And Sheba was scribe, and Zadok and Abiathar were the priests. And Ira also the Jerite was a chief ruler under David. Then there was a famine in the days of David for three years, year after year, and David inquired of the Lord. And the Lord answered, It is because of Saul and his bloody house, because he slew the Gibeonites. And the king called the Gibeonites and said unto them now the Gibeonites were not of the children of Israel, but of the remnant of the Amorites, and the children of Israel had sworn unto them, but Saul sought to slay them in his zeal for the children of Israel and Judah. Therefore David said unto the Gibeonites, What shall I do for you? And wherewith shall I make the atonement, that ye may bless the inheritance of the Lord? And the Gibeonites said unto him, 
we will have no silver nor gold of Saul nor of his house, neither for us shalt thou kill any man in Israel. And he said, What ye shall say, that will I do for you. And they answered the king, The man who consumed us and who devised against us, that we should be destroyed from remaining in any of the borders of Israel. Let seven men of his sons be delivered unto us, and we will hang them up unto the Lord in Jibiah of Saul, whom the Lord chose. And the king said, I will give them. But the king spared Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan the son of Saul, because of the Lord's oath that was between them, between David and Jonathan the son of Saul. But the king took the two sons of Rizpah the daughter of Aiah, whom she bore unto Saul, Armoni and Mephibosheth, and the five sons of Michael the daughter of Saul, whom she brought up for Adriel the son of Barzillah the Meholathite. And he delivered them into the hands of the Gibeonites, and they hanged them on the hill before the Lord, and they fell all seven together, and were put to death in the days of harvest, in the first days, in the beginning of barley harvest. And Rizpah the daughter of Aiah took sackcloth and spread it for herself upon the rock, from the beginning of harvest until water dropped upon them out of heaven, and she suffered neither the birds of the air to rest on them by day nor the beasts of the field by night. And it was told David what Rizpah the daughter of Aiah, the concubine of Saul, had done. And David went and took the bones of Saul and the bones of Jonathan his son from the men of jabesh who had stolen them from the street of Bethshan, where the Philistines had hanged them when the Philistines had slain Saul in Gilboa. And he brought up from thence the bones of Saul and the bones of Jonathan his son, and they gathered the bones of those who were hanged. And the bones of Saul and Jonathan his son buried they in the country of Benjamin in Zila, in the sepulchre of Kish his father, and they performed all that the king commanded. And after that God was entreated for the land. Moreover the Philistines had yet war again with Israel, and David went down, and his servants with him, and fought against the Philistines, and David waxed faint. And Ishbibanab, who was of the sons of the giant, the weight of whose spear weighed three hundred shekels of brass in weight, he, being girded with a new sword, thought to slay David. But Abishai the son of Zeruiah succored him, and smote the Philistine and killed him. Then the men of David swore unto him, saying, Thou shalt go no more out with us to battle, that thou quench not the light of Israel. And it came to pass after this that there was again a battle with the Philistines at Gob. Then Sebechai the Hushathite Slosef, who was of the sons of the giant. And there was again a battle in Gob with the Philistines, where Elhanan the son of Jari Orajim, a Bethlehemite, slew the brother of Goliath the Gittite, the staff of whose spear was like a weaver's beam. And there was yet a battle in Gath, where there was a man of great stature, who had on every hand six fingers and on every foot six toes, four and twenty in number, and he also was born to the giant. And when he defied Israel, Jonathan the son of Shimea, the brother of David, slew him. These four were born to the giant in Gath, and fell by the hand of David and by the hand of his servants. And David spoke unto the Lord the words of the song in the day that the Lord had delivered him out of the hand of all his enemies, and out of the hand of Saul. And he said, The Lord is my rock, and my fortress, and my deliverer. The God of my rock, in him will I trust. He is my shield, and the horn of my salvation, my high tower, and my refuge, my Savior, thou savest me from violence. I will call on the Lord, who is worthy to be praised, so shall I be saved from mine enemies. When the waves of death compassed me, the floods of ungodly men made me afraid. The sorrows of hell compassed me about, the snares of death lay ahead of me. In my distress I called upon the Lord, and cried to my God, and he heard my voice out of his temple, and my cry entered into his ears. Then the earth shook and trembled, the foundations of heaven moved and shook, because he was wroth. There went up a smoke out of his nostrils, and fire out of his mouth devoured, coals were kindled by it. He bowed the heavens also, and came down, and darkness was under his feet. And he rode upon a cherub, and flew, and he was seen upon the wings of the wind. And he made darkness pavilions round about him, dark waters and thick clouds of the skies. Through the brightness before him were coals of fire kindled. The Lord thundered from heaven, and the Most High uttered his voice. And he sent out arrows and scattered them, lightning, and discomfited them. And the channels of the sea appeared, the foundations of the world were laid bare at the rebuking of the Lord, at the blast of the breath of his nostrils. He sent from above, he took me, he drew me out of many waters. He delivered me from my strong enemy, and from them that hated me, for they were too strong for me. They came before me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my stay. He brought me forth also into a large place, he delivered me, because he delighted in me. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness, 
according to the cleanness of my hands hath he recompensed me. For I have kept the ways of the Lord, and have not wickedly departed from my God. For all his judgments were before me, and as for his statutes, I did not depart from them. I was also upright before him, and have kept myself from mine iniquity. Therefore the Lord hath recompensed me according to my righteousness, according to my cleanness in his eyesight. With the merciful thou wilt show thyself merciful, and with the upright man thou wilt show thyself upright. With the pure thou wilt show thyself pure, and with the froward thou wilt show thyself unsavory. And the afflicted people thou wilt save, but thine eyes are upon the haughty, that thou mayest bring them down. For thou art my lamp, O Lord, and the Lord will lighten my darkness. For by thee I have run through a troop, by my God have I leaped over a wall. As for God, his way is perfect, the word of the Lord is tried, he is a buckler to all them that trust in him. For who is God, save the Lord? And who is a rock, save our God? God is my strength and power, and he maketh my way perfect. He maketh my feet like hinds feet, and setteth me upon my high places. He teak hate my hands to war, so that a bow of steel is broken by mine arms. Thou hast also given me the shield of thy salvation, and thy gentleness hath made me great. Thou hast enlarged my steps under me, so that my feet did not slip. I have pursued mine enemies and destroyed them, and turned not again until I had consumed them. And I have consumed them and wounded them, that they could not arise, yea, they are fallen under my feet. For thou hast girded me with strength to battle, them that rose up against me hast thou subdued under me. Thou hast also given me the necks of mine enemies, that I might destroy them that hate me. They looked, but there was none to save, even unto the Lord, but he answered them not. Then did I beat them as small as the dust of the earth, I stamped them as the mire of the street and spread them abroad. Thou also hast delivered me from the strivings of my people, thou hast kept me to be head of the heathen, a people whom I knew not shall serve me. Strangers shall submit themselves unto me, as soon as they hear, they shall be obedient unto me. Strangers shall fade away, and they shall be afraid out of their secret places. The Lord liveth. And blessed be my rock. And exalted be the God of the rock of my salvation. It is God that avengeth me, and that bringeth down the people under me. And that bringeth me forth from mine enemies. Thou also hast lifted me up on high above them that rose up against me, thou hast delivered me from the violent man. Therefore I will give thanks unto thee, O Lord, among the heathen, and I will sing praises unto thy name. He is the tower of salvation for his king, and showeth mercy to his anointed, unto David, and to his seed for evermore. Now these are the last words of David. David the son of Jesse, the man who was raised up on high, the anointed of the God of Jacob, and the sweet psalmist of Israel, said. The Spirit of the Lord spoke by me, and his word was on my tongue. The God of Israel said, The rock of Israel spoke to me, He that ruleth over men must be just, ruling in the fear of God. And he shall be as the light of the morning when the sun riseth, even a morning without clouds, as the tender grass springing out of the earth by clear shining after rain. Although my house be not so with God, yet he hath made with me an everlasting covenant, ordered in all things and sure, for this is all my salvation and all my desire, although he make it not to grow. But the sons of Belial shall be all of them as thorns thrust away, because they cannot be taken with hands. But the man that shall touch them must be armed with iron and the staff of a spear, and they shall be utterly burned with fire in the same place. These are the names of the mighty men whom David had, the Tachmanite who sat in the chief seat among the captains, the same was Adno the Esnite. He lifted up his spear against eight hundred, whom he slew at one time. And after him was Eliezer the son of Dodo, the Ahohite, one of the three mighty men with David when they defied the Philistines who were there gathered together for battle, and the men of Israel had gone away. He arose and smote the Philistines until his hand was weary, and his hand cleaved unto the sword, and the Lord wrought a great victory that day, and the people returned after him only to despoil. And after him was Shammah the son of Aji the Hararite. And the Philistines were gathered together into a troop where there was a piece of ground full of lentils, and the people fled from the Philistines. But he stood in the midst of the ground and defended it, and slew the Philistines, and the Lord wrought a great victory. And three of the thirty chief men went down, and came to David in the harvest time unto the cave of Adullam, and the troop of the Philistines pitched camp in the valley of Rephaim. And David was then in a stronghold, and the garrison of the Philistines was then in Bethlehem. And David longed, and said, Oh that one would give me a drink of the water from the well of Bethlehem, which is by the gate. 
and the three mighty men broke through the host of the Philistines, and drew water out of the well of Bethlehem that was by the gate, and took it and brought it to David, nevertheless he would not drink thereof, but poured it out unto the Lord. And he said, Be it far from me, O Lord, that I should do this. Is not this the blood of the men who went in jeopardy of their lives? Therefore he would not drink it? These things did these three mighty men. And Abishai the brother of Job, the son of Zeruiah, was chief among three. And he lifted up his spear against three hundred and slew them, and had the name among three. Was he not most honorable of three? Therefore he was their captain, however he attained not unto the first three. And Benaiah the son of Jehoiada, the son of a valiant man of Kabzeel, who had done many acts, he slew two lion-like men of Moab. He went down also and slew a lion in the midst of a pit in time of snow. And he slew an Egyptian, a goodly man, and the Egyptian had a spear in his hand, but he went down to him with a staff and plucked the spear out of the Egyptian's hand, and slew him with his own spear. These things did Benaiah the son of Jehoiada and had the name among three mighty men. He was more honorable than the thirty, but he attained not to the first three. And David set him over his guard. Asahel the brother of Job was one of the thirty, Elhanan the son of Dodo of Bethlehem. Shammah the Herodite, Elika the Herodite. Helez the Paltite, Ira the son of Akish the Tekoite. Abizer the Anathothite, Mabane the Hushathite. Zalman the Ahohite, Maharai the Netophathite. Heleb the son of Bana, a Netophathite, Ittai the son of Ribai out of Jibia of the children of Benjamin. Benaiah the Purathonite, Hidai of the brooks of Gosh. Abielben the Arbathite, Azmaveth the Barhumite. Eliabba the Shulbanite of the sons of Jashan, Jonathan. Shammah the Hararite, Ahim the son of Sharar the Hararite. Eliphelet the son of Ahaspe, the son of the Machathite, Iliam the son of Ahithophel the Jelonite. Hezra the Carmelite, Pare the Arbit. Egil the son of Nathan of Zeba, Bani the Gadite. Zelek the Ammonite, Naharai the Berathite, armor bearer to Job the son of Zeruiah. Ira and Ithrite, Gareb and Ithrite. Uriah the Hittite, thirty and seven in all. And again the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel, and he Satan moved David against them to say, Go, number Israel and Judah. For the king said to Job the captain of the host who was with him, Go now through all the tribes of Israel, from Dan even to Beersheba, and number ye the people, that I may know the number of the people. And Job said unto the king, Now the Lord thy God add unto the people, how many soever they be, a hundredfold, that the eyes of my lord the king may see it. But why doth my lord the king delight in this thing? Notwithstanding, the king's word prevailed against Job and against the captains of the host. And Job and the captains of the host went out from the presence of the king to number the people of Israel. And they passed over the Jordan and pitched camp in Aroer, on the right side of the city that lieth in the midst of the valley of Gad and Tor Jazer. Then they came to Gilead and to the land of Tatimachi, and they came to Danjon and about to Sidon and came to the stronghold of Tyre and to all the cities of the Hivites and of the Canaanites, and they went out to the south of Judah, even to Beersheba. So when they had gone through all the land, they came to Jerusalem at the end of nine months and twenty days. And Job gave the sum of the number of the people unto the king, and there were in Israel eight hundred thousand valiant men who drew the sword, and the men of Judah were five hundred thousand men. And David's heart smote him after he had numbered the people. And David said unto the Lord, I have sinned greatly in what I have done. And now, I beseech thee, O Lord, take away the iniquity of thy servant, for I have done very foolishly. For when David was up in the morning, the word of the Lord came unto the prophet Gad, David's seer, saying, Go, and say unto David, Thus saith the Lord, I offer thee three things. Choose thee one of them, that I may do it unto thee. So Gad came to David and told him, and said unto him, Shall seven years of famine come unto thee in thy land? Or wilt thou flee three months before thine enemies while they pursue thee? Or shall there be three days pestilence in thy land? Now advise, and see what answer I shall return to him that sent me. And David said unto Gad, I am in a great strait. Let us fall now into the hand of the Lord, for his mercies are great, and let me not fall into the hand of man. So the Lord sent a pestilence upon Israel from the morning even to the time appointed, and there died of the people from Dan even to Beersheba seventy thousand men. And when the angel stretched out his hand upon Jerusalem to destroy it, the Lord repented of the evil, and said to the angel who destroyed the people, It is enough, stay now thine hand. And the angel of the Lord was by the threshing place of Araunah the Jebusite. 
And David spoke unto the Lord when he saw the angel who smote the people, and said, Lo, I have sinned, and I have done wickedly. But these sheep, what have they done? Let thine hand, I pray thee, be against me and against my father's house. And Gad came that day to David and said unto him, Go up, rear an altar unto the Lord on the threshing floor of Arauna the Jebusite. And David, according to the saying of Gad, went up as the Lord commanded. And Arauna looked, and saw the king and his servants coming on toward him, and Arauna went out and bowed himself before the king on his face upon the ground. And Arauna said, Why has my lord the king come to his servant? And David said, To buy the threshing floor from thee to build an altar unto the Lord, that the plague may be stayed from the people. And Arauna said unto David, Let my lord the king take and offer up what seemeth good unto him. Behold, here are oxen for burnt sacrifice, and threshing instruments and other instruments of the oxen for wood. All these things did Arauna, as a king, give unto the king. And Arauna said unto the king, The Lord thy God accept thee. And the king said unto Arauna, Nay, but I will surely buy it from thee at a price, neither will I offer burnt offerings unto the Lord my God of that which doth cost me nothing. So David bought the threshing floor and the oxen for fifty shekels of silver. And David built there an altar unto the Lord, and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings. So the Lord was entreated for the land, and the plague was stayed from Israel.